Hello, Jada Baradi Ekatana Balabrodia. Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Let it be my tongue. Neri Alabarato Ziketema Labaradia Gada. Lord, remember me. Remember me. Lord, remember me. Remember me, Lord, and visit me. And the Lord remember Sarah. And the Lord did unto her. Lord, remember me. This year, 2018, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me. Advance my life on every side. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Take your seat comfortably this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord God has made. The Bible says we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Very briefly this morning, we'll be rounding up our teaching series on the subject of accessing God's plan for your life from his book. Before we go into the ministration for the covenant day of business breakthrough. Accessing God's plan for your life from his book and i'd like to quickly reiterate certain points that will help our minds to fully grasp the things that have been communicated in the course of the month one god have a plan for your life say god has a plan for my life listen god has a plan for your life not minding where you are now and what you may be going through. God has a plan for your life. Not minding where you are now or what you may be going through as an individual. Life may present you a bend, but don't consider it to be your end. Because God has a plan for your life. Life may present you a bend that slows down your journey, that appears as if there's no other way forward. Don't take the bend as the end. So no matter what you are going through now, no matter what may be happening around you, God has a plan for your life. You carry a generational destiny. Are you following what I'm saying? You matter to this world. You may appear to be on the ground today, refuse to be grounded. Because God has a plan for your life. Are you following what I'm saying? Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. That popular scripture. He says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. God has a thought for your life. People also have thoughts about you. But don't mind their thoughts about your life. Because people will tell you, you can't go beyond this point because of who you are, your background, what your certificate. Despise the thought and the opinions of men concerning your life. Listen to me. The opinion of men is not relevant to the plan and purpose of God for your life. Is somebody here this morning? God has a plan. Listen, and God does not need the opinion of any man to lift you up. He doesn't need the approval. Listen, people may not like your face. It is irrelevant. God does not need the approval of any man to make you who he has desired you to be. God has a plan for your life. He said, I know the thoughts that I 
thing towards you. He said they are not taught of evil. He said they are taught of peace to give you an expected end. I shall be great. I don't need your approval. All that matters is myself and God. So say to yourself, I shall be great. The Bible said, though thy beginning may be small, he said, your latter end shall be greatly beyond their imagination. No? He said, your latter end shall be great beyond what they think of you. You know, there are people, they just look at you and say, this man, this man, he can't go far. God will disappoint them. God will put them to shame. Don't look at their faces. Look at God. God is taking you somewhere. The Bible says, when the Lord shall have built up Zion, he says, Zion shall come forth in his glory. Don't despise my days of little beginning. God is only building me up. So you can't conclude the story of my life. Are you here this morning? So don't let anybody intimidate you and beat you to submission as if you can't succeed. I will not only succeed, I will succeed where? God has a plan for your life. Number two, God's plan for your life is packaged in his book called the Bible, but it is waiting for you to discover it. That's why destinies are discovered. That plan is in his book. Isaiah 29 verse 11 down to 12. The vision of all is like words written in a book. The vision, the package of God for your life, there are words written in a book waiting for you to discover it. Now listen, our lives are defined by what we hear. How we hear and what we do with what we hear. Our lives mold the shape on by what we hear, how we hear those things, and what we do with what we hear. So hear well. Tell your neighbor, hear well. Because that will determine how, determine how you heard. Some people will say, well, that thing they are preaching is not for me. I am 65. I am 70. What else do I want in life? You are lying. There is more to life. Abraham began his journey at 75. His life began to have meaning. So for the first 75 years of his life, 74 years of his life as it was, Abraham's life was meaningless. But when he encountered the purpose of God for his life, his life began to deliver color. I will not die a non-entity. Listen, the discovery of divine purpose prolongs a man's life. Because no man, no prophet is permitted to die before his time. The vision you see is the vision that preserves your life. That's why when people say it is finished, they finish. But when you say I refuse to die, you refuse to die. Because life and death, they are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So here well, when the word of God goes forth, when you are shown the things that God has said, believe it and you will become it. There is power in the world. He said, and, and the spirit entered into me as he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Listen, somebody here, can I talk to you this morning? They may not, you may not be their choice, but you are the only chance they have. You didn't hear me well. 
You didn't hear me well. You may not be their choice. But you are the only chance they have. So they will come back to you. That is why no man can take your post. Are you following? No one. You may not be their choice. So, because you don't look like them. But you are the only chance they have. David was not the choice of his father for kingship. But it was the only chance they had. Number three. Tell somebody I shall be great. Number three. Everything written in the book concerning you is meant to come to pass. Meant to come to what? If only you will believe it. Say I believe. The Bible says, and we all with an open face beholding the glory of the Lord as in a mirror. He said, we are being changed because you believe. Because you believe. It is what you believe that you become. Every scripture, every scripture is prophetic. Is what? Now, when we say a scripture is prophetic, what we mean is this. The scripture does not only speak into the now, it is also speaking into the future. It has the power to shape the now. And it has the power to secure the future. So when you believe the scripture, your now is not only preserved, your future is what? Secured. That is why the Bible says, the path of the just man is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Because the scripture you believe secures the now and secures the where? The future. My tomorrow shall be great. Amen. Listen, you can't conclude my story. Because of what you are seeing around me now. Because of what I'm going through. I will disappoint your expectations. Amen. You know why? God will lift me beyond your imaginations. I like that. Tell somebody I will disappoint your expectations. Because God will do much more for me than you think. Hallelujah. He said, this man, this man, he can't, he can't, he can't. He can't. It's not near irony. <laughs> God will disappoint their expectations. And take you beyond where they imagine. So what are we saying? God has a package for your life. You are not empty. You are not a misfit. You are not an accident that happened. You are not a product of emotional flurry. No. Before you were ever consumed, God has concluded, I mean, conceived, God has concluded your life. Are you following what I'm saying? So look out for what is the plan of God for you. I have seen people who said it won't matter. I won't do what? I won't matter. They never gave me a chance. They never considered me. But they begin to call me. Now, they say, Daddy, one of them called me a few days ago. He said, Daddy, ah. He said, We know that God has made you our head. They may not agree with you in the family now. But very soon, you will become their Messiah. Yeah. No, listen, because that is who you are ordained to be. The Bible says, hey, is somebody here? The Bible says, saviors shall arise upon Mount Zion. So to my family, to my community, to my generation, I am a what? A savior. That means to say they will look up to me. Say they will look up to me. Praise the Lord. There's somebody here this morning. So you must see well. You must do what? Because it is as far as you can see. You. That is what determines. You see, no man, God gives a man vision, but it is the man that determines the scope of the vision. 
There's no place that God puts a limit on man and says, you will not go beyond this point. No, 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 no. He said to Abraham, come out, look up as far as you can what? And see. So the more you see from the word of God, the more you become. From glory to glory is changing. Is changing. Is changing me. His likeness and image to perfect in me. The love of God shown to me. God is changing. He's changing. He's changing me from earthly things to the heaven. His likeness and image to perfect in me. The love of God shown to me. Now, can I tell you something? You will be at my celebration party. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell somebody you will be there to celebrate with me. Shortly, I mean shortly. I mean very soon. I mean very soon. You will congratulate me and congratulate me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. is changing me. Don't, hey. Listen, don't mind what the people say. It is irrelevant in the plan and purpose of God for my life. You see, if God were to take counsel and mind the opinion of your enemy, you won't make it. <laughs> Tell somebody I will make it. <laughs> Shout hallelujah! What is the plan of God for your life? Three things, but we we'll take one in this service. Number one is that you are a child of destiny and not permitted to live like a destitute. Number two is that you are redeemed for exploit. Number three, you are redeemed for glory and honor. Not for shame and reproach. But in this service, we'll just take you as a child of destiny and not permitted to live as a destitute. Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. The Bible made us to understand that as many as have been redeemed, they are justified. And as many as he has justified, they are what? Glorified. So, I am justified to be what? Glorified. Now listen to me, precious people of God. You may have had in life like the prodigal son, but there is a tomorrow for you. Hallelujah. The Bible speaking in Luke's gospel chapter 15 about the prodigal. He took all that he wanted, all that seems to be his, the father gave to him. The Bible said in verse 13, he went to a far country, wasted those resources. And no man gave unto him, he began to suffer. And one day he said to himself, My father has many hired servants and they are not suffering like this. Because he was eating the food meant for the door. I mean, pigs. And he said, I will arise. Tell somebody I will arise. He said, I will arise and go back to my father. The beauty of it is this. As he arose to go back, he met the father at the door. Listen to me. You may have missed it. God is still waiting for you. God is what? The beautiful apart. Is there a word like that? <laughs> the most beautiful part of it is this. He's not only waiting, he's going to give you a greater glory than you missed. Do you understand what I've said? All that the boy collected, paraf, money, clothing, he went. Squandered everything. By the time he returned, the father said, this son was dead, but he's now alive. They gave him the ring. 
They gave him a beautiful course. They killed the fatted calf for him. Beyond what he lost, he received. There is a tomorrow for you. There's what? A tomorrow for me. You may have missed it like the prodigal. There's still a tomorrow for you. Because God has an agenda for your life. The happiness in the now, not minding, he had concluded your end before your beginning. That is God. Now listen, you may have lived like Rahab the Arlot. But the goodness is this. When Rahab believed the report of the Lord, her name entered the hall of fame. Rahab, prostitute. Now listen, they do, nobody up to today has a record anywhere of the parents of Rahab. Nobody can say Rahab, the daughter of Abimelech. No. She was so profoundly, profound a prostitute that the only identity they could give to her was that profession. Rahab, the prostitute, the harlot. But listen, one day, Rahab believed the report. Rahab, that's what Hebrews 11, 31 says. Can I tell you this? Destiny is recoverable. Write it down. Destiny is what? Recoverable. If you will believe the report of the law, it doesn't matter how shattered and broken your life has been. You can recover all. You can overtake. If you will believe the report of the law, tell somebody, I shall be great. You know, that is one word, one sentence or whatever you want to call it that I say often and often. You can't take that from me. I tell myself and I say it loud. I shall be great. I shall be great. You may not like it, but that is what and who I shall be. Tell somebody, I shall be great. Shall be great. Tell him, don't look down at me oh, because you will soon need me. Look at his face and tell him. <laughs> Don't look down at me. Because you will soon need me. Need me. Why? I shall be great. Don't celebrate my errors and destroy my life. God will make me. He said, when the Lord shall have built up Zion. Are you following what I'm saying this morning? You have a glorious destiny. Don't allow the happiness around to limit your life. Is somebody here? Don't let anyone conclude your story for you. They don't have a right. They don't have what? And you may have been unstable like Peter and deny Christ. <laughs> Backslide today, wake up tomorrow. Born again today, back in sin tomorrow. Listen, God is able to make you stand. If you will believe the report of the law. The same man Peter that did, I mean, told, rejected Christ and denied him was the same man who stood on the day of Pentecost. Who became the spokesperson of the apostle. Not just the spokesman. He was also the leader of the apostolic move. His beginning was like this. Unstable. His name means reed. Unstable. Reed is a weed that you find in the water. Any direction water is blowing. That's the thing the way reed will be doing. That was the life of Peter. Are you following what I'm saying? When it was Simon. But Jesus said, you will not end your journey as Simon. You will conclude your journey as Peter. Peter means Petros. Petros means a rock. Your beginning may be shaking. Your business may be shaking. Family life may be shaking. You won't end like that. Don't mind the people that think you cannot succeed. If God helped Simon... 
and turned him to Peter. God will help me. God will do what? He will help me. His name was Simon initially. Simon means read. He was unstable. Nothing around him has glory and honor. But he went on to become Peter the Rock. What am I saying to you? There is hope in your future. Yeah. But you must believe the report of the Lord. You must believe the report of the Lord. How do you come in contact with the report of the law? Search ye out of the book of the law. Isaiah 34 verse 16. Take the word of God. Search, read, meditate. In the place of meditation, you begin to see the picture of who God has designed you to be. Is somebody here this morning? Men may have abandoned you like that man by the beautiful, I mean, at the pool of Bethesda. Who had spent 38 years of his life forgotten. But one day, Jesus walked to him and said, man, would that be made whole? He was still thinking the way he has been thinking before. Jesus said, listen, I'm here to help you. I don't know what your limitations are, but this morning, receive him! 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 That man had been limited by his thought and by his condition. He was abandoned. Listen, there's a time, it gets to a point in time in life that people won't help you again. They become tired. They have carried that man for 38 years. And how can you carry a adult of 38 years every day? You'll be tired. So they left him there. You may have been left, your family forgotten you. They don't even know you are in Lafia. Because they've tried and tried to make things work for you. Things that's not work. They say, anywhere you want to go, just go. We don't want to see you. They say, just go. And you are just living as if you are a destitute. Listen, tomorrow you shall be desired. Tomorrow you shall be desired. Tomorrow you shall be desired. All you need is open up to the help of God. Open up to the help of God. And how do you open up to his help? Jesus, I surrender. I do what? I surrender. I've tried to manage this thing. It's not managing. I've tried to put them together. The more I try, the more it's scattered. But Lord, I know you have a plan for me. I surrender. I do what? And as you put your hand in the hand of the Savior like that, it begins to lead you one step after the other. Your tomorrow shall be better than your today. Yeah. All right, very quickly. Covenant of business breakthrough. What is business? I'm going to be very fast. What is business? Business is trading or exchanging with your exchanging your talent. Business is exchanging or trading with your talent or your gift for profiting. Business is simply trading your talent or your gift for what? For profit. <laughs> Hello, sir. If what you are doing is not what you are gifted in, it's difficult to succeed in it. You are just busy. You are not in business. Many are simply busy. They are not in business. Why? They are not trading their giftings or their talent for profiting. Every man has an endowment from God. Now let me tell you this story. Some years ago when I was in the university, there was this young lady I was privileged to be the president of the campus fellowship. So there was this young lady who was in the fellowship with us. She was a year or so um, behind me studying biochemistry and in by the time she was in year three she was still writing year one courses so by the time we were graduating there was no hope that she can graduate because she was still 
carryover that were more than carryovers. So one day, I saw one of the brethren that we used to be in the church, I mean the fellowship. I said, where is sister so-and-so? We're just talking. And her name just came to my mind. I said, where is sister so-and-so? And the brother said, she's in London. I said, long? How come? How manage? How did she go there? The brother said, ah, she won national Maggie cooking competition. I said, what? She is anointed to cook from heaven. <laughs> now, listen, oh. <laughs> she didn't go to any catering school. Somebody just tell her, you cook very well now. Why don't you try this competition? At the local level, she tried. At the zonal level, she tried. She kept winning and winning and winning. State level, regional level. Until she got to the national level. She won. I said, she, cooking competition in Nigeria. She won. God baptized her with the anointing to cook. And she was wasting her life studying biochemistry that does not carry anything in her body. <laughs> now, can I talk to you this morning? There is a part of greatness for you. Just trade your gifts. For profiting, life will deliver. Trade your talent, what is inside. Stop coping, trying to be like somebody else. You don't need it. Be yourself. What is it that is in you? Exchange it. Now listen, listen, listen. Every time you trade your gift, you get profited. Because your gift is a solution to somebody's problem. Did you hear that? Your gift, your talent is a what? Solution to somebody's problem. So what is business? Providing solution to problems around you. That's when you're in business. Are you following what I'm saying? And how do you flourish in business? I'll just give you one principal key. How to flourish in business. Is by connecting to divine source. Connecting to what? Divine source. Now listen to me. Every high flyer in life is connected to a power source. Don't mind what you see in town. Oh. <laughs> Every high flyer in life is what connected to a power source because life is spiritual life is beyond the ordinary you see people who goes to connect with occultic power because they want to succeed every person you see big society big wigs they are connected to a power source are you following what i'm saying just wake up oh, so you understand the real thing. You can learn all the principles. If you miss the place of power, you'll be grounded. Every eye flyer is connected to him. Now listen, if this fan will keep working, it must remain connected. Remain what? That's why you see people who are not born again, they get connected to demonic occultic power. Now, and a believer remains ordinary, is not conscious of the power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost is the greatest asset of the believer to succeed in life. To do what? Succeed. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be what? Evidence of what heaven looks like on the earth. And ye shall be living proof of what it is to serve the Lord. And ye shall be living proof of the power of God to make wealth. He says, and ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be what? My witness. The word witness there means evidence. 
So God has ordained you to live a life of evidence. Say evidence. evidence. Say evidence. evidence. A life of a living proof. He said, but what do you need to live that life? And ye shall receive power. So the endowment of the Holy Ghost upon the life of a believer is what gives him the power to break through in life. And it's not just at the baptism of the Holy Ghost alone. The Bible says, be being filled. So there's a place of continuous empowerment. That you spoke in tongue 10 years ago and the tongue was peppermint. Love you, love you, love you. And it's still love you, love you, love you. You have not had shendam to eat. And this is eight years after. Something is wrong with that tongue. Tell your neighbor, can we test the tongue you speak? Whether your own is lafia, lafia, lafia. Remember there is shendamo. There is shabu. So you can go to lafia, shendam, shabu. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Grow in power. The more you grow in power, the more your territories is enlarged. Every enlargement in life is a function of power. It's a function of what? Power. Not minding what Crimea, one, some of these states in the Baltic, not minding what they did. Vladimir Putin went there and annexed it. And did what? Annexed it. Up to today, it's an annex. Power causes you to enlarge. Power causes you to do what? So you want your shop, that kiosk, to move to a shop. And from a shop to a supermarket, you need what? Power. If not, the devil will reduce it from supermarket to shop, from shop to kiosk, from kiosk to a cell. And after that, you will close the business. Yours will not be closed. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? So, power is not because you want to preach. It's for dominion. For what? Dominion. Say, Lord, empower me. You take time in the place of praying and fasting at times to be and deal with... Look, complimentary card is not what deliver contract. Are you following what I'm saying? You can send proposal all over the town and it will not do anything. You can have advert all over the place and nothing will respond. You can have a shop in the high brow part of the city thinking people will come and they will not come. Because there are satanic forces organized, orchestrated to close that business, to make a mess of your life. Some years ago, they brought a man into my office and they said, sir, um, I want you to pray for this man. I said, what is the matter? I looked at him. What is it? The dignity that brought us said, this man has a PhD. I said, what? And he's teaching in a primary school. And not the owner of the school, sir. But a teacher in the primary school with a PhD. And his appearance doesn't look like he has gone to school at all. Whatever is standing over your destiny. Whatever is resisting your breakthrough by the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, I will overturn and overturn and overturn. I command those powers overturn. Those powers overturn. Those powers overturn. They sat over his life, make a mess of his life. PhD, teaching in primary school, not the proprietor of the school. The devil is wicked. Whatever the enemy has done against your life, by the unction that sent me here, I command it over time. Over time. Over time. Some years ago, I sat with a general in his house. And we're talking. 
sharing with him the gospel and encouraging him. And as we're talking, he says, sir, he said, when I was a second lieutenant in the army, I started building a house in Benin. That was 35 years ago. He said, but sir, do you know up to this time, the house has not gone beyond foundation. How many years? 35. And he retired without completing the house. Lift up your hands. The unction behind this commission is the unction that makes for vibration. So whatever is holding you captive, Barati Akosialada, by the unction of the Holy Ghost, I command them over to The Bible says a fire goeth before him and consumeth his enemies. So anyone that says you won't go, that you won't break forward. Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire! Holy Ghost fire! Consume them! Now! 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 Take your seat. What are the hindrances to business breakthrough? That's where we stop. We just mention one point, and then the next service will continue from there. Ungodly or unrighteous dealings. One major hindrance, resistance to business breakthrough is ungodly or unrighteous dealings. Because whatever a man sows in life, you will reap. You can't deny short change, the labor, the wages of the people that work with you and expect God to bless you. Are you following what I'm saying? Job chapter 8 verse 20. He said, for I know that God will not help the ungodly, the evil doer. Neither will he cast away the perfect man. Be careful of your ways. You give a vehicle to a driver, to a mechanic to walk upon. He says, I've changed part, he has not changed. He only washed the other one and replaced it. God will catch up with you. You may think you are smart, but there's the eyes of the overseeing God. You can't be doing that and break through. God will resist you. That's the truth. That's the truth. Ungodly dealings, unrighteous dealings. Bring ye all the tide. You think you are smarter than God. You won't go faster. Some people are so unfaithful in tithing. They negotiate their tithe and give all manner of reasons why they will not pay tithe, why they can't do it. God says, I understand. I do what? She be the Bible says, Come, let us reason together. You are, God, I can't pay. God says, I understand. And I also understand that your suffering will be long. Your suffering will be what? Can I tell you this? Everybody pays tight, whether forcefully or joyfully. If you won't give it to God joyfully, the enemy will take it from you forcefully. Ungodly, unrighteous dealings. We are living in days that to trust a brother in business, your heart is beating. Because right inside church, Brothers are defrauding brothers. You are almost more at ease to go and do business with an outsider because you know he's an unbeliever. You prepare for him. <laughs> but in church, oh, deceit. Deceit. Listen, you can't defraud your brother and say God should prosper you. 
Can I talk to you? <laughs> he may not know, sir, but God knows you have defrauded him. How much is the profit? 300,000 naira. That's what you declared, but God knows it was 500. Hello? You shared the 300 with him, 150, 150. And the extra 200 you took, you will pay. You will do what? You will pay. Because God will not hold you guiltless. And every time you play foul like that to God, the enemy knows this man has played foul. Because the covering, the glory around you is lifted. So the enemy comes and strike. Are you following what I'm saying? Listen, it is not how much you began business with that matters. It is faithfulness. It is what? I was teaching Bible school in Nabekuta some years ago, and a lady came to me and shared a testimony how she began business with five naira. How much? Five naira. In the days of Anibba, when the school there was still very young, there was no water. So what she does, she bought meat, bought albosa, bought atarodo, and she could get broom. So she began to make stick meat. meat. Bought a little granite oil. She was making stick meat. You know, put four, put atarodo in between, and albosa onions. And she would take to the buttery to sell. And she was faithful. God was blessing her. She was paying tight. She was turning the money over. Turning the money over. Uh, over a period of time, she had savings that could buy a GP tank. And from there, she, had, she got the water tanker that were dropping water in the GP tank. And her father was helping her to sell. Gradually, they were making money. They bought another GP tank. And that was how she sent herself to school. Little is much when God is in it. Little is what? Much when God is in it. Stand to your feet. I'd like you to lift up your hands this morning. Neliara Bararosh Kibagagarandia. I will open up my heart, ready for your holy fire. I will let you into my mind and into my soul. Pledge in my For some individuals here this morning, I want to pray for some people here this morning. Nobody is condemning you, nobody is criticizing you, but you can't continue life this way. Jesus is saying, Son, daughter, give me your heart. I want to help you. I don't know where you are standing this morning, I don't know who you are. Probably at one point in time, you were even born again, but you had backslidden. Because of the challenges of life, there is help for you in God. Until a man returns to God, his life is never repented by God. So wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus. Lift up your hands above your head. You want to, don't be ashamed. Thank God for that hand. Thank God for that hand. Lift it up above your head. It's between you and God. You want to say, Jesus, I surrender to you this morning. I surrender to you this morning. I have tried to make things work, but it's not working. But Lord, I choose to believe your report like Rahab their allot. 
Because I know there's a future for me. You lifted up your hand. Just pick your Bible and come this way. I want to pray for you. There are people here. You were once born again. You were once born again. But the life you are living now, you know it's not right. You know it's not godly. Nobody's blaming you. Nobody's finding fault with you. But God wants to help you. You can hide from God and be blessed by God. Wherever you are, you want to make it right. Please speak your Bible. Walk up to the altar. Time is of the essence this morning. This is not a day of dilly dallying with God. This is a day of prompt action. This is a day of quick action. He is a very present help in the time of need. Wherever you are, wherever you are, pick your Bible, walk up to this place. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. You know yourself. You know your life. You know the way you have lived. You can't go on like that. You can't continue like that. You can't. The enemy is out there looking for you, waiting for you. It's time to run to Jesus. It's time to find a hiding place in him. Wherever you are, just pick your Bible, walk up to the altar. Walk up to the altar. Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. It doesn't matter how battered and shattered life has treated you and how you have been. Listen, there's a tomorrow. There's a tomorrow. He said, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Do I walk through the mud of life? And I'm covered with mud. The Savior can clean me up again. I don't know who you are. That has been the story of your life. Pick your Bible, whatever you brought to church. Come this way now. Come this way. Tell him, Lord, I'm ready to be helped. Coming forward, he's saying, Jesus, I'm ready to be helped. I know I can't help myself. I know I've messed it up. I'm still waiting for individuals here. There are people who ought to be standing out here. Listen, this is your day. This is your moment. This is your hour. It's time to return like that prodigal son. There is a golden crown waiting for you. There's a golden ring. There's the cloth of many colors. There's this party heaven wants to throw on your behalf. You need to be here this morning before I begin to pray. Pick your Bible, walk up here now. Now, those of us in the front, bow your heads, place your right hand upon your chest. Place your right hand upon your chest. The Spirit of God is telling you, go out, let that pastor pray for you. Bring whatever you have and come here. Your Bible, whatever, walk up here now. Father, thank you for this precious life. Now I pray for you that the grace that you responded to, that same grace will wash away your sins. Amen. The grace that you responded to, that same grace will cleanse you. Amen. By the blood of Jesus this morning, your sins are atoned for in the name of Jesus. Amen. And whatever is standing against your life, by the same blood of Jesus, they are cleared out of your path in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Please, those of us in the front, open your eyes, go with our ushers. Put your hands together for Jesus, for them. Lift up your hands wherever you are, everyone. This morning, I'd like to pray for you. Fresh empowerment. Fresh empowerment. Yes. Lord, fresh empowerment. Yes. Now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes. Receive fresh fire now. Yes. Fresh fire. Yes. Fresh fire. Yes. In the name of Jesus. From today, I command every obstacle on your way to give way. Amen. That's health challenge, I command it to be healed. Amen. Somebody there, you've been going and going and going and you've been promised and promised and promised and as if it will never end. Now, in the name of Jesus, stretch forth your hand. Receive help now. Amen. Receive help now. Receive it now! Receive it now! Receive it now! In the name of Jesus! This month of March will end well for you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord.